the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to our Benefice Eucharist on this, the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple, also known as Candlemas. Today we remember Simeon and Anna who encountered the baby Jesus and recognised that he was the Son of God, the Messiah. They also recognised that his life wasn't going to be straightforward and that his life was going to be one that would bring grief and sorrow to his family. We welcome you all as members of our community, those who usually worship in our churches and those of you who have become part of our community through our online worship. We also remember those members of our community who are unable to access our online worship during this lockdown. We light this candle to remind ourselves of that diverse community and bring us together through Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, the light of the world. As we come together in our worship, ready to meet our Lord and Saviour in word and sacrament, let us pray together our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we begin our Eucharist, let us call to mind all those times when we have fallen short of what God would expect of us. Hear the words of our Saviour Jesus Christ, I am the light of the world, whoever follows me shall never walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Let us therefore bring our sins into his light and confess them in penitence and faith. Father eternal giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in what we have said and done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Collect our readings for the Feast of the Presentation of Christ in the Temple. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, clothed in majesty, whose beloved Son was this day presented in the temple, in substance of our flesh, grant that we may be presented to you with pure and clean hearts by your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Carol and Bob will now read our Old and New Testament lessons. 
Our Old Testament reading is taken from Deuteronomy. The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among you, from your brethren, him you shall heed, just as you desired of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, or see this great fire any more, lest I die. And the Lord said to me, They have rightly said all that they have spoken. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their brethren, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. And whoever will not give heed to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I myself will require it of him. But the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The New Testament lesson is taken from the book of Revelation, chapter 12. A great portent appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. She was pregnant and was crying out in birth pangs in the agony of giving birth. Then another portent appeared in heaven, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns and seven diadems on his heads. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and threw them to the earth. Then the dragon stood before the woman who was about to bear a child so that he might devour her child as soon as it was born. And she gave birth to a son, a male child, who is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When the time came for their purification according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male shall be designated as holy to the Lord. And they offered a sacrifice according to what was stated in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, looking forward to the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit rested on him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Guided by the Spirit, Simeon came into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what was customary under the law, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace, according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the presence of all peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and for glory to your people Israel. And the child's father and mother were amazed at what was being said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to his mother Mary, This child is destined for the falling and the rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be opposed, so that the inner thoughts of many will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher, she was of great age, having lived with her husband for seven years after her marriage, then as a widow to the age of 84. She never left the temple, 
but worshipped there with fasting and prayer night and day. At that moment she came and began to praise God and to speak about the child to all who were looking for the redemption of Jerusalem. When they had finished everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. The child grew and became strong, filled with wisdom, and the favour of God was upon him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Through the written word and the spoken word, may we know your living word, Jesus Christ, our Saviour. This morning we're celebrating the presentation of Christ in the temple, otherwise known as Candlemas. The day marks the end of the Christmas period, and we turn our hearts and minds from Christmas to the next stages of the church, church's year. In the next few weeks, we will start our journey through Lent and then turn our minds to the events of Holy Week and Easter. But today, we pause and go with Mary, Joseph and the infant Jesus to Jerusalem. Joseph and Mary have made the journey to do what is required of them. The ritual presentation of their firstborn child, Jesus, to God, and the sacrifice that accompanies it. The old man Simeon is guided to meet with this new family and taking Jesus in his arms is moved to say, my eyes have seen your salvation. In these words, Simeon is telling us what salvation looks like. Salvation takes on the face and body of a human being, Jesus. Can you imagine how Mary and Joseph reacted to the remarks made by Simeon? Mary and Joseph were probably puzzled and shocked by these remarks from a strange old man. But I'm sure they weren't entirely surprised. After all, angels and others had been saying things like this to them over and over and over again since before their baby Jesus was born. For them it was one more prophecy to ponder on and reflect. For us, it is an affirmation. It tells us that Jesus is our salvation. God has come among us in human form to live as we live, experience life with us in all its wonder and sorrow, and lead us to a new appreciation of what it means to be truly human. What it means is becoming more and more of a challenge. Does being human mean we have to go to war to settle differences? Does it mean we cannot solve our problems, only make more of them? Does it mean that fear, hunger, injustice and cruelty are products of our humanity, regardless of what we do? Being truly human seems to connect with the message in the book of Hebrews that talks about the gifts of God among us. The very gifts that free us from the power of evil, the power that brings us to war and injustice. When we say yes to Jesus, we are saying no to these other things that enslave us. Then we have to start living like it. Living like this means several things. First, it means a refusal. Living as though Jesus is the redemption of our humanity means being ready to say no to the things that the world tells us we have to put up with. It means refusing to put up with the things that corrupt and destroy other people and the world that God created. It means beginning to hold our leaders accountable for their decisions, particularly those decisions that lead to the harm of others. 
This is what it means to be followers of Christ. Our affirmation of Jesus also demands our best effort. Like Jesus, our life is to be offered for others in service. Each of us has an opportunity during this act of worship to re-offer our lives to God. Each of us has the task of discerning what God asks us to do with that life. Each of us has moments when someone like Simeon steps up to us and says, here is what I see for you. Some of the voices we hear are not God's, but many are. Now imagine that you are in the temple at the moment of the presentation of Jesus. Imagine that you are part of the small group standing around the Holy Family and you hear the words of Simeon. Master, now you are dismissing your servant in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. Imagine again, those words are being said about you, that you are part of God's plan for salvation. The great power of the Gospel is that it infects each of us with its message of hope and clarity about who we are. Everyone who reads it or hears it proclaimed can be part of its redemptive message. All of us people are part, a big part, of God's plan of salvation. Each of us is gifted for it and each of us is called to live it. So as we start to think ahead towards Lent, there are things that we can encourage each other to achieve during that time. We can make a pledge to spend more time with God in prayer so that we can hear what we are being told to do to serve him. We can determine to get to know Jesus better. For many he is simply a name, for others he is a friend, a teacher, a guide, their Lord. In our baptism, we entered into a unique and special relationship with him. Take some time to ask him during this act of worship to help you to become closer to him. And we can take time to read scripture, starting with today's gospel, with Luke's account of the presentation let the story reveal to you what it may. Put yourself in the place of the others in the temple. It's a story that brings pictures to our mind, pictures that are pure, truthful and whole. Today, we are all invited to join that moment when Mary, Joseph, Simeon and Anna see the truth of what God is doing. While we may not have that same kind of experience for ourselves, we celebrate the sharing of theirs. We rejoice that in the midst of our broken world, God has come among us. And because of that, our future is assured. Lord, now let us thou, thy servant, depart in peace, according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before the face of all people. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. We believe in God the Father from whom every family in heaven and earth is named. We believe in God the Son who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit who strengthens us with power from on high. 
we believe in one God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Alison will now lead us in our prayers of intercession. As we step into each new day, may our thanks and praise give joy to the living God. Almighty God, you promised through your Son Jesus to hear us when we pray in faith. We pray that all our church communities far and wide, set loose from behind closed doors, will be one dwelling place of your Spirit to bring healing and hope. In our pain, anxiety and loss, we cry to you, O God. We bring before you our nation, our neighbourhood, our loved ones and ourselves. Thank you for the skill and endurance of medical workers and carers in all settings. For those for whom they care bring healing. Thank you for the skill and endurance of our scientific community and technical professions. Thank you for the skill and endurance of those who provide our daily needs of food and warmth, all those working hard in our town and community. Sustain them all and uphold them. In the name of Jesus, bring comfort, strength and hope and space to be soaked in your peace. Lord, graciously hear us. Reveal yourself to the nations and sustain all who carry the burden of government. Reveal yourself to those who have power and influence. Lord, you provide bread sufficient for the day. Be with those who can intercede for the poor with least resources and to all parts where prayers are focused. Be with families, with children homeschooling and their support networks and for young people and their friends and friendships. Be with those whose plans have been put on hold and with those people we especially know who are at the forefront of our thoughts, struggling with illness and difficulties, that you will take away their pain. We pray for those who have lost their livelihoods and fear for the future. May they rest in your purposes and rely on your timing. You bring life to all in the shadow of death. We pray for those who have recently died and their friends and families, those who have cared for them. May they all know the welcoming of your love to where there is life in all its fullness. We declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night that the works of your hands may we sing for joy. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We are the body of Christ. In the one Spirit we were all baptised into one body. Let us then pursue all that makes for peace and builds up our common life. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. Father, in Christ there has sprung up a light for the righteous. Accept the offering of your church and grant that Christ may shine in us to the praise and glory of your name. Amen. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ who is the one with you from all eternity. For on this day he appeared in the temple in substance of our flesh to come near to us in judgment. He searches the hearts of all your people and brings to light the image of your splendour. 
Your servant Simeon acclaimed him as the light to lighten the nations, while Anna spoke of him to all who looked for your redemption. Destined for the falling and rising of many, he was lifted high upon the cross, and a sword of sorrow pierced his mother's heart, when by his sacrifice he made our peace with you. And now we rejoice and glorify your name, that we too, having seen your salvation, and joined with angels and archangels in their unending hymn of praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. 
Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Body of Christ, keep us in eternal life. The blood of Christ, keep us in eternal life. Let us pray. Lord, you fulfilled the hope of Simeon and Anna who lived to welcome the Messiah. May we who have received these gifts beyond words prepare to meet Christ Jesus when he comes to bring us to eternal life. For he is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
Keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, who was wounded for our sins, that you might bear in your life the love and joy and peace, which are the marks of Jesus in his disciples. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and all those you love and pray for, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.